This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's time for a Samsung review. No, not the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus that I have over here, although you can use this in conjunction with this Samsung. This is the Samsung PowerBot R7070. It's the latest generation of Samsung's robotic cleaners, and it's the most advanced one yet. Not the most expensive, though. They have some that are even more powerful and more expensive, but this one is the smartest so far, and it's become my favorite RoboVac, as a matter of fact, so far among the six or so different kinds I've tried and reviewed. We're going to look at it now. So yes, for those of you who are Samsung fans, when it comes to smartphones or laptops or any of their other products, they do make robotic vacuum cleaners too. And they've been moving along, along quite a clip. I have to say, and they approach it more like a technology company than a appliance company, shall we say, which means that with Roombas, they've been around for what, 10 years now. I think we've been trying and testing Roombas for about that long now. And Samsung is new to it, but every generation, which can be as quick as every six months, you see improvements. There's a lot of technology inside of the product. This is not a cheap cleaner. The list price on this is $699, but you're going to find it on sale all the time. This is kind of the same thing with Galaxy phones, too. They always have really good sales. So, uh, For example, if you're in the United States, Bed Bath & Beyond has their 20% off coupons and it's often on sale for $5.99. So you can get it for like $5.79. Best Buy has it on sale sometimes for $4.99. So take that price with a grain of salt. It's what would be considered a mid-priced robot as they go. You get a lot of features and a lot of technology, though, compared to a lot of other competitors, including Roomba, including even the Neato D-Bot and some others that we've looked at, and more affordable ones like the Echo Vax model that we recently reviewed. So what are you getting for your money? Are you getting a more powerful motor? Now there's a sticker on it that says 40x more powerful than the previous model. And it is a more powerful suction and has a cyclonic kind of design to it. And you can see the picture on screen what that means there. Sort of like the, with, you know, the theory that Dyson did where if you spin the dirt far and away, you have better suction and all that sort of thing. Well, that's one of the improvements right there is the fact that it sucks stronger than even the most expensive Roomba. So sucking is good when you're a vacuum cleaner. That's 20 air watts. They also have a more expensive model, the R9250. That one's about $899, and that one is supposed to be 70x more suction than their baseline previous generation model. And that one sounds almost like an upright vacuum cleaner, too, the, the quality of the motor and the, the pitch to it. This one, too, has a more of a vacuum cleaner sound, where most robotic cleaners sound kind of like and not so much of the sucking thing. This one sounds more like whoa, sucking, you know, and then some of the yeah, 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 as the motors move along with it. So what's this fancy stuff you're paying for compared to a your average $250 robotic vac, be it the D-Bot that we recently reviewed or the Shark Eye on any of those, you've got a camera on it. So it does pretty advanced room mapping with it. You've got a heck of a lot of sensors on this thing. So this is not a bump cleaner like a Roomba is. This is one that goes up to things and most of the time won't even touch them. So it's a little bit more relaxing. It does true mapping. So it will map out the rooms and you can see the map in the app once it's completed a run. So what it does is it methodically vacuums areas. It goes, does a back and forth logical kind of thing instead of if you're driven crazy by the bump cleaner like the Roomba style just bounces off of things until hopefully it's covered all the whole room. This does back and forth logical motions and then it does it vacuums like a human does. This is the only thing I can say, the way I would do it. Say there's an area in the corner of the room and you know that you have to do several strokes back and forth to get coverage in that small area. That's exactly what it does. So you're paying for those kind of smarts there. It's also built more ruggedly and in a more polished way. It looks sort of more like a high-end appliance, more than most of these robotic vacuum cleaners do, where even the more expensive ones look and feel kind of cheesy and plasticky. This one is solid. It is also heavier. It's about nine and a half pounds, but it's got a nice finish to it, a nice beefy build. Hopefully it'll stand the test of time. In terms of the design, it's a D-shaped cleaner. So you have a roller in the front, just like a traditional vacuum. We'll get into that in detail later. And it's more effective though. I mean, compared to say a Roomba or in one of the others that has a six to eight inch roller, when you've got 11.4 inches of cleaning area, you're going to get more clean there. So here it is next to our Roomba iRobot, Roomba 870, which was a fairly high-end model about two years ago, still about equivalent to a $500 Roomba today. But you know what? They all really pretty much look the same other than different colors and that sort of thing for the Roombas. They don't change a whole lot in terms of design. So you can see very different design philosophy. One is a D-shaped cleaner that does mapping, which is the Samsung, also the Neato Bot Vac is that, that sort of cleaner too, and the rest are the round bump cleaners, except for the new Roomba 980, which is their $900 top of the line model, the first one that does mapping. So on the front here, this is the bumper mechanism. We haven't had any 
problems with it in case it does do a little bump into the furniture. And it's even got little rollers over here so that it rolls around things without really getting stuck or grinding into anything. It's a nice little touch. Anyway, height comparison versus the Roomba, it is a little bit taller. It's not a real huge difference here. So uh, the, some of the, the Echo Vax that we reviewed one of those recently, the D-Bot, they're the only ones that are even shorter than this. But for the furniture that we have, it fits under most everything except for the reclining sofa, which nothing fits under, not even my hand attachments on my vacuum. Another neat feature is the fact that it has rug detection. Essentially, when it's vacuuming, it'll run at its, say if you have it on the normal setting, it's going to run at its normal level of vacuum action. And when it gets on a rug, you can hear it ramp up the motor and vacuums more deeply. Once you've had that feature, that's kind of hard to give up. It doesn't have dirt detect like the Roomba, though, and that's too bad. So if it's a particularly dirty area, it really doesn't seem to have any idea compared to a not-so-particularly dirty area. But I'll take the, the heavier-duty vacuuming when it approaches a rug and is on a rug versus hardwood floors any day, even over dirt detection. It also has an interesting approach to edge cleaning. Instead of having the spinning side brush, which is both a blessing and a curse, those spinning side brushes, as if you, if you watched our Echovax review, you saw sometimes those side spinning brushes can throw the dirt everywhere in the room instead of actually pulling it into the vacuum cleaner's path. This one does away with those totally, and instead it has the edge master cleaner, is what it's called. It's that little red line on the front of the vacuum. It actually is a little red rubbery squeegee that extends, and when it comes to the edge of a room, it'll say edge on the display. It'll flatten itself against there, move up as close as it can, and it runs this that squeegee along across the front of the top and pulls the dirt into the vacuum cleaner. So that's, it's been pretty effective, I have to say. Our baseboards have never looked better. It works pretty darn well. Now to control this thing, you can either use the controls on the, the robot itself, which are pretty minimal, so there's not a lot of options that you have there, or you can use the remote control, which we'll take a look at, or there's an app. I think a lot of people are into the app these days, and the app had some growing pains. Honestly, Samsung's gone through several iterations. It became Samsung Connect, and now it's Samsung Smart Things. They bought a company that does home automation stuff, smartphone app-wise, and they finally got most of the kinks out. It seems to be working pretty well at this point. Works for Android, works for iOS, and I'll show you what you can do with that. Most of it is a replication of what you can do with the remote, but there's a couple of other things there. There are a few less than perfect things, though, especially given the fact that Roomba can do this, and the, in this price range, I'd expect you, you've got one-time schedule cleaning, and then you've got everyday schedule cleaning, so every day at 11 a.m. But you can't say, I just wanted to clean on Tuesdays and Thursdays, or Mondays and Wednesdays, and that sort of thing. And that kind of surprises me. Even if you're using the smartphone app, it just doesn't have that functionality. The claimed runtime is up to 90 minutes, and I say it runs about an hour when we have it running and cleaning a fairly open 1,500 square foot floor plan. Now what happens again is it will go home and recharge and resume if it needs to to finish up that floor plan. And that's about better than average among RoboVac cleaners in this price range. It's a pretty decent battery life. Now it's a lithium ion battery so there's no memory effect. That's a good thing with an appliance that you might leave sitting there five or six days out of the week. And the charger on this is pretty quick too. And you know, it does have a larger than average brick style charger. It's like a laptop style charger that plugs into the charging dock. So looking underneath this is where the battery is underneath this compartment over here. This is what they call the emergency on-off switch. Now, you're not normally going to need this, but if you're servicing it, if you're taking it apart or something like that, you just feel the need to completely shut it off, well, that's what that one is for. We got nice big off-road style wheels here, and notice how clean this is. I really didn't have to clean this up, spend much time on it, even though it spent hours and hours cleaning the house at this point. It's much tidier than the average Roomba or Roomba clone that's on the market. Also, one thing that's nice is this is the front brush roll right here, just like you would have on a traditional vacuum cleaner. So that's about 11.2 inches long. It's big, and there's no rollers in front of it to pick up dirt and to hold onto it, nor do you have to worry about it pushing any dirt around because it's going to suck it up right away. So the wheels stay clean. Everything stays clean. Nice. These are the charging contacts right here for the dock. And if you want to take this off to clean it, now this is a, a silicon sort of material with little serrations on it to kind of mimic a brush effect, but there's no bristles, which is probably a good thing because they create a lot of friction and drag, so it moves about more efficiently. This just happens to clean wood floors really nicely, by the way. It almost looks like they've been mopped, so it's a, it's a nice nice thing. So if you want to clean the brushes, which you shouldn't have to do because they say that 
what they have is a brush cutting mechanism. Basically, the way it's designed here is if any hair gets wrapped around it, it's going to slice it off. And really, there are, there are no hairs stuck here. Again, after hours of using it. But you can lift it right out if you need to take it off, clean it, whatever. You probably won't really need to very often, though. So if you want to remove the dustbin, which of course you will after it's done cleaning, push that button, you lift it up. As simple as that. Touch controls are simple here, and they are touch. They're not clicky buttons. You've got your auto go button, which also functions as stop if it is doing something and you wish to stop it. This is spot clean, and that is go home and charge. The rest of the stuff you handle either on the remote control or your smartphone app, iOS or Android. So this is the remote control, nothing uh, unusual here. You've got three different vacuum settings. You've got echo, low power, which is quieter. You've got your normal, and you've got your turbo or high powered mode. This is the go home and charge button. This is the power button, obviously, right here. Spot clean mode. If you want repeat, turning it on or turn off. So uh, this is an important one to mention with repeat. You can either have it clean and clean and clean endlessly until it runs out of power and it goes home to the dock and it charges itself. And it's pretty good at finding the dock, by the way, even in a fairly open, large floor, floor plan like we have. Or if you turn off repeat, then it will do mapping mode and it will map what it's doing. And if it runs out of battery power, it'll go home and charge and then resume. It'll usually charge up to about 50%. It does seem to base it on how big a space it thinks it has left, and it'll go ahead and resume. It will not do the resume cleaning if you have the repeat function on. Sound, if you want it to make little sounds when it has error codes or when it's done. It's pretty quiet, honestly. It's not really very disturbing. And we've got the clock, so you can set the clock right here. And you've got the schedule function. And if you want to control it with the... Uh, the D-pad right here, you just hit remote and you can make it go left, right, forward, you know, the, the usual typical thing. Some remotes actually have a laser pointer function, basically it's an IR pointer. This model does not, so you just point on the floor where you want it to go. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind having that function. So this is the application. I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Note 8 here. It really doesn't matter what Android phone you use or what brand or anything like that. I just happen to have a Note 8. It says waiting because it's sitting here patiently waiting to go home to its home base. In fact, if you forget and leave it somewhere after about 30 minutes, it will try to go home. So don't leave it on a table like we're doing. Definitely, that really might cause a problem. So if you want to send it home to recharge, you can do that right there. If you want to turn it completely off, you can. You can see the battery charging status right there. You can use this as a remote cleaning device and drive it around left, right, forward. You get the idea. Send it on auto clean, send it on spot clean. You can set your suction power right there. Again, you have three options, max, normal, and quiet. So history is where it gets interesting. This is where the mapping function is, in case you were wondering. Some people have bought it and not figured out. So here's a history of what it's done. There's one auto clean pattern with a map. So it tells you, I went home to recharge. And then it resumed again over here, and it completed it. So you get a map here, and you can even see the patterns, basically, the, the, the strokes up and down, where it cleaned. It really cleaned the heck out of that rug. It's a very dense cleaning <laughs> right over there. Now you can't really do anything with the map. You can't tell it. Don't go over to this section over here of the house or anything like that. But for a cleaner in the $500 price range, that's pretty fair. So we're gonna, we got a pretty full dirt bin here. And as you can see, it's picked up a lot of dirt, dirt, uh, dust, fine dirt. That's the thing that's hardest for a vacuum to pick up, be it robotic or regular, but particularly robotic because they don't have such a strong motor. So the, the fuzz on the rug, the pet hair, the human hair, that's actually easier for it. But when it picks this up, it's extracting it from the floor and from the low pile carpets that we've been running on. That's pretty impressive. So the design of this means it's easier to empty without getting dirt everywhere, having to stick your fingers in so much compared to the average robot vacuum cleaner, which is nice. So it has pull marks right there. This is a rubber seal here, so it's a little stiff because it's sealing it to keep the dirt away. So you just yank on it, take it out, and you see it's just a nice big opening. So no having to stick your fingers in like with the Roomba or the Echovax we reviewed. Just dump it out. There's the cyclone section right there. And the whole thing is nice and clean. And you can wash this too. There are no sensors in here. So then you just, well, wash it if you want. And if not, you just stick it back together again like so. And so for the filter, right over here, there's a little pull. And it says, you can wash me. So they have this little pull tie here. So you can get the filter out if you want. And it's a foam kind of filter. Sort of like the Dyson style filter. And you can see that that's dirty and fuzzy too. So you can bang this out or you can wash it. And they give you two because if you're going to want to wash it. And that way you have another dry one ready and available for you until, well, this one dries out. So in the box you get 
a length of this stuff. This is a magnetic strip that tells it where not to go. This functions sort of like the virtual walls in the world of Roomba. And I, I like virtual walls that project an IR beam and tell it where not to go. I, I wish that all cleaners had it. This one does not. A couple of other robots do the same thing. They use the magnetic strips instead. So you got a dog bowl or something like that. You put this down. So that's the Samsung PowerBot R77. I think you can tell that I like it. I've tested a lot of these and you know, like many of you, I just want to have a clean house and I don't want to have to be the one doing it all the time. It's the most human of all the cleaners so far. The intelligence behind this, they've really got, they're onto something here with this. It's got a good combination of methodical patterning and also when it discovers little alcoves and areas under chairs, it just does what you would do. It goes back and forth and back and forth and it really cleans very thoroughly, probably more thoroughly, I have to, hate to say it, than I would. And the suction is better than average among robotic cleaners and the build is more robust. It stays cleaner, it's easier to empty there's a lot of things to like about it. Robotic cleaners are still not perfect. They're still kind of expensive. I say wait and see if you can get this on sale for around 500. That's a great price for something that has this kind of build quality and these kind of features. And again, still these are better for hardwood floors, tile, that sort of surface, low pile carpet, uh, small area rugs like you saw that we had in our video. Not for shag carpeting. Not Does anybody have shag anymore? Not really for high pile carpeting either, but low to mid pile carpeting it can do. There you're still going to want to use an upright vacuum cleaner though to do a thorough cleaning, but on hard surfaces this does it as well as you could do with any regular human powered vacuum cleaner. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like the dirt on the Samsung.